Hello, everyone. Welcome to our descriptive practice question series for RBI. Today's question that we are going to discuss is the State of World Population Report 2024 has been released by UNFPA. Explain the key findings and highlight the issues observed in the report with respect to India. So here in the introduction part, We'll say UNFPA is a UN subsidiary which works directly to tackle sustainable development goals on health, education, and gender equality. And the theme for 2024 State of World Population Report is Interwoven Lives, Threads of Hope, Ending Inequalities in Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. So this is the small introduction part for this answer. Let's quickly see the key findings of this answer. So I have divided the uh, observations made by the uh, report into five subheadings. So the first part is about the population. As you all are aware that India leads globally with an estimated population of 1.44 that is followed by China and India's population in 2020 in 2011 uh, was 1.21 billion and the report actually reveals that India's population is going to double in 77 years. So the next point is about the demographic profile. That is the report has actually uh, made a demographic breakdown uh, in the uh, of the country's population. That is uh, the, uh, the percentage of population in different age group. So uh, in the uh, age group of 0 to 14, it is 24%. And between 10 to 19 years, it is 17%. And uh, with the working age group population, that is 15 to 64, has almost two third population, more than two third of the population lies in this age group. And about this uh, senior citizens, it is almost 7% of the population. And when we talk about the life expectancy, the report says that among men, it is 71 years and with women, it is 74 years. So the next point is about the progress in sexual and reproductive health. So the report says that over the past 30 years, uh, India and across the globe, uh, the countries have actually made significant strides and the global rate of unintended pregnancy pregnancies has fallen substantially by nearly 20 percent globally and the number of women who are using modern contraceptive methods has also doubled so uh, with respect to the uh, countries uh, that is almost a large number of countries have adopted laws that against domestic violence maternal deaths and uh, the maternal deaths have actually decreased by 34 percent since 2000. So now comes the persistent inequalities. So having said that, that we have uh, made several, several uh, progress with respect to this, the several parameters in this sector. Uh, despite the progress, Millions are still denied their health and rights every day. There is gender-based violence. It actually uh, is rampant in every, in practically in every country and community. And, and there has been, uh, there are countries, there are many countries where uh, there has been zero reduction in maternal mortality since 2016. And in an alarming number of countries, the rates are actually rising. Nearly half of women still are unable to make decisions with respect to their own bodies. Then it talks about the marginalized communities, the groups. So it says that although women across socioeconomic classes and ethnicity says that uh, compared to the earlier happenings, uh, barriers to health care have come down over the period of time, but the women most, uh, the women coming from most marginalized have experienced the least improvement. So especially the indigenous group of women are often denied culturally appropriate maternal health care and their own childbirth practices are mostly they, they are criminalized in several societies. So it results in higher risk of death in pregnancy and childbirth. So these are the key observations made by the report and we will see that what all are the concerns uh, 
given by the report. So first we'll talk about the discrimination and stigma. It says that the role of racism, sexism, and other forms of discrimination continues to play a key role in blocking broad gains in sexual and reproductive health of women and girls. So the people, uh, who, the women and, and girls actually with disabilities, they face up to 10 times more gender-based violence while also facing higher barriers to sexual and reproductive information and care. And uh, the minority group that co comes under this LGBTQIA plus face serious health disparities that is coming from the stigma and discrimination associated with this group of people. Then comes the health and social challenges. So the report says that 30 years of progress in social and reproductive health has mostly ignored the most marginalized communities worldwide. According to it, the child marriage percentage in India was at 23%, that is quite higher between 2006 to 2023. The mater maternal deaths in India have fallen considerably, uh, but the report noted that India continues to see inequities in maternal death risk. So the maternal uh, mortality rates have significantly decreased, but still it is present. Uh, it, it shows basically a va vast regional disparity in our country. For example, the highest MM maternal mortality rate of 1,671 per 1 lakh birth is seen in Tirab district. This is a small example. It says that uh, there is a higher proportion of uh, maternal mortality rate among indigenous people, then the marginalized groups, including women with disabilities, migrants and refugees, ethnic minorities, uh, and those from lower caste often have limited access to necessary health services. For example, the half of Dalit women do not receive antenatal care. Now comes the socioeconomic challenges. Apart from gender-based violence, uh, for the violence is aggravated by caste-based discrimination. That is, the Dalit women have high rates of gender-based violence and it is associated with a means of oppression and control. And it talks about the economic constraints force women, many women into cycle of poverty, exacerbating poor health outcomes and continued reliance on inadequate health care. And there is an increased vulnerability associated which com which is compounded by climate change, humanitarian crisis, war, and mass migration. And it actually impacts more disproportionately on women. Then comes inequitable health benefits in India. So India has made uh, progress in healthcare, accessibility, and quality. But the problem here is the benefits have been cornered by a wealthy section of people people belonging to ethnic groups that already had better access to healthcare. So those who are marginalized, they remain to be marginalized and they can't access the health facility. Now, uh, when, we, when we talk about the global health trends, it says that progress on key health measures of women is slow slowing or completely stalled with 800 women still dying daily from childbirth related causes and many lacking autonomy over their sexual and reproductive decisions. So these are the findings and the key concerns highlighted by the report. And in the conclusion part, we will say that the report suggests that to fulfill the promise of universal sexual and reproductive health and rights, one needs to root out inequalities, inequities from our health systems and policies and focusing, giving more focus to those women and young people who are most marginalized and excluded. On the other hand, a large young population present a significant opportunity for economic growth as we have seen that almost 68% of our uh, working age uh, comes under working age group. So we have to 
we have to utilize them and direct them into for a better economic growth and development. Hence, there is a need for continued effort in improving health and social outcomes, especially with respect to the most marginalized communities. And this particular, the findings that is there in this report can be utilized strategically by decision makers while formulating population policies and other interventions in the health sector. So this is it for today. Thank you so much.